Hello and welcome to the Powerful Packs YouTube channel. My name is Alice and I have the September 2022 Powerful Premiere Pack here in front of me. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. Ooh, what do I have? Ooh, alcohol-based markers. The Nature Palette. Oh, there's purples and pinks in here. This is so pretty. Let's open this up and see what's inside. This is by Tombow. These are alcohol-based markers, like I said. Oh, this is so pretty. These are gonna be dual tip. So let me pull out this purple. They look like this. One side is gonna be a chisel nib for filling in large areas, and the other side is gonna be a brush nib for getting in detail and shading. Perfect, love that. And I love this color selection as well. I can't wait to play with these. The next thing I see in here is a sticker. Oh, it's a beautiful flower sticker. I love this, this is gorgeous. We have a liner. This is a Unipin Fine Line Water and Fade Proof Pigment Ink. I've used these before. This is in 8.4, which is a great all around size. And this is gonna work wonderfully with those alcohol markers. Then we're going to have a pencil, a mechanical pencil. It's going to be a Sumo Grip 0.5. And this is the kind that has this nice twist up eraser so you don't have to carry around a separate eraser. You have a twist one here. And then, like I said, it's gonna be a 0.5 lead, so it shouldn't break super easily, just a pretty standard lead. And it's this nice, super ergonomic, um, thick plastic, and mine is blue. And then the last thing that we have in here is this surface. I see some Bristol board down here. So this is the Seth Cole Bristol board. It's a 12 sheet pack of nine by 12 two ply artists Bristol plate. You can reverse both sides of the sheet so you can work on both sides. Um, and it's designed for pen and pencil markers and suitable for fine line work and the surface will handle erasure and reworking. So this is what you're going to get in the September Palettful Premiere Pack. You're going to get this 12 set of Tombow alcohol-based markers, the Nature Palette. You're gonna get this super cute sticker, a 12 sheet pad of Bristol board, this awesome twist up mechanical pencil, and a 0.4 Unipin fine liner. I am really excited to delve into the world of alcohol markers again. And like I said, I love this color palette. So let's go ahead and make some art. So as with all of the boxes, the first thing that I'm going to do is make some swatches. So I took a piece of the paper, cut it down, and then tried all of the different markers on it to see how they were going to blend on the paper and to see what the color looked like. This is really helpful because you can see what the color looks like outside of the pen and you can use it as a little reference sheet when you're drawing. I also created a little test flower, which I used the brush side for, and you can see that I am moving the pen in the direction that I want the line to go, if that makes sense. So for example, I'm starting where I want the color to be most concentrated and ending where I want the color to blend into the next color and creating these like loose sweeping brush strokes. And that's how I'm going to be blending for the majority of this video. I added in a little stem and then I decided to test the pen and see whether I liked it best going underneath the markers or going over the top of the markers because sometimes I prefer to do my liner after it and sometimes I prefer to do it before. So I wanted to test and see which one I liked out. I ended up enjoying doing the liner after afterwards that's just a personal preference so once I had everything tested and felt pretty comfortable with the supplies I taped down some paper and I started drawing I decided I wanted to draw a crystal cave because I love drawing crystal caves they're so fun and they're so pretty and I thought it would look really good with the purples and the pinks that came in this set so I used the pencil to draw that out it was super nice because it was really easy to fit in your hand. It was very ergonomical and the eraser was really helpful for if I made any mistakes. It was nice to just have that right there. So I had that all sketched out and then I had to start layering in some colors for the background. I really needed a darker color for the background so I actually started by layering in brown. I started with brown so that I could layer other colors on top and it would tint those colors and it would still keep it really dark. Once I filled the whole thing in with brown, I started layering over the top with some purple and some pink and some blue, and that's going to create this darker color. So the next color that I'm gonna come in with is this dark blue color. When you mix that on top of the brown, you get a really dark green color, and we want more of a purple color. So once I've added in that blue, I'm gonna come back in with some purple, and that's gonna give us that really, really dark purple color that I'm looking for. 
With markers, a lot of people aren't sure how to mix colors, and my best thing would be to say, mix them on the page. You want to mix them right on the page. You can see here I'm adding in that purple, and we're getting that really dark, almost black purple color that I was looking for. Mixing alcohol markers is somewhat similar to mixing paint, but instead of mixing on the palette, you're going to mix them right on the page. So for this color, I'm taking blue, then I'm putting purple right over the top of it, and it's going to create a darker purple blue. That's how I mix my colors. For this, I decided to start by the back and work to the front. This is because the back was the darkest and the front was going to be the lightest, so it made the most sense for me. I fill in all of these like larger areas, so the deep black area of the cave where you can't really see anything and then some of the larger chunks of crystals. And I use this because I like to kind of work through the whole piece at one time so that I can kind of see everything that's going on and be aware of all of the different crystal chunks and things like that that are going on. So now you can see I'm working towards my third layer closest to the front and this layer is going to be a little lighter than the two before it. So I am starting with that purple as a base and then I'm adding in a light blue. This is gonna tint that purple a more blue purple so it's going to blend well with the other colors behind it, but it's not going to make it darker than the blue purple behind it. So it's still going to stay nice and bright. Once that's in, I started coloring in some of the stalactites, stalagmites, which one's the one that hangs on the top? I, I don't remember. Um, and I used some of the brown for shading and then went over the top with purple. Now for the main crystals, I'm starting with this light purpley pink and I'm adding in all of the shading on the left side of the crystals. Then I'm adding a little bit of shading just down to the base of the crystals and I'm going to go around and I'm gonna fill the whole page up with that one base layer before I move on to the rest. And that's going to allow us to keep things consistent and make sure that we're not forgetting anything <laughs> as we go. Um, instead of jumping around completing one crystal and then moving to the next crystal, I like to add in all of the layers of one color than all of the layers of the next color. Now you can see I'm going in with a darker purple to add in some shading. You can see I add in the darker purple and then I go back in with the light purple to blend it. You layer the purple on top of itself and just kind of use your pen to agitate the surface just a little bit, not too much, and you should see that pen start blending in. I'm also adding in some blues. This is gonna add a reflective look and it's going to make the crystals look like they have more depth. It's always helpful to add in a couple different colors when you're working with crystals um, because they do reflect so much light around them. So what I like to do is I like to pick colors that are very close to the color that I'm using on the color wheel. So for example, I'm using purple and blue and pink are really close on the color wheel. So that means I can mix in blue and pink without really worrying about it changing the overall color and it will create that depth that I'm talking about and it gives us more colors to shade with and to work with so that you can create more of a beautiful look. So I definitely recommend um, using different colors. For example, if you were doing uh, a red crystal, you could use purples and oranges in there and it would blend beautifully. So just take a look at the color wheel and that will help you figure out what different colors you can use in a monochromatic color scheme to keep it from being too monochromatic. As you can see, I'm brushing my brush strokes down towards the area that I want them to lighten. So the area that you start your brush stroke is going to be the darkest and the area that you end your brush stroke is going to be the lightest because you can lift up the pressure as you're releasing that brush stroke and get a slightly lighter color and a tapered point to your brush stroke. I hope that made sense, but that's basically how you blend in alcohol markers is you use your brush strokes, you have a a harder pressure at the start and then a lighter pressure at the end and then you just kind of feather and layer those strokes over the top of one another. You want to use a lighter color to blend in your darker colors. Um, I recommend a lighter color that is similar to your darker color or the color that you're blending it into. And it just takes a little bit of practice. So I recommend, like I said, I had my little swatches at the beginning and I did my little flower. I recommend doing a couple little tests on there, draw some hearts, eyes, flowers, apples, you know, really, really basic things that you feel comfortable drawing that you can just play around with the blending and the shading on, even just a sphere. And that will get you more comfortable with the shading and the blending before you actually go into your final piece. These colors are really beautiful and I found them really easy to work with. I really loved the color selection that we got with the nature palette, so I can't wait to use it for more. And this really made me excited to use alcohol markers again. I also thought they blended really, really nicely and I liked how soft the brush tip was on these. So I thought these were really, really beautiful pens. 
Once I was done with most of the coloring in, I went in with the inking. The reason I chose to do the inking afterwards was because it's a lot less stress for me to not have to worry about coloring in the lines. I just personally prefer to do it this way, but you could definitely do the line art beforehand and then color it in if you wanted to. But I find that by doing this, I'm able to be a lot more free and loose when I'm drawing, worry less about mistakes. And then I can tailor the line to the actual drawing versus trying to tailor the drawing to the line, if that makes sense. And I find that it pr produces better Better results at least for me personally. So I'm going over right now and adding in all of the black lines. I go all the way around each crystal but for the inside of the crystal I just do some light loose lines to indicate the direction that the crystal is going. I don't connect all those lines because I don't want to get rid of any of the shine or the um, white of the paper that's showing through because the white of that paper is what's giving us a shine because we're not using any white pen or anything like that to go back over the top of these. So if you're drawing crystals or something shiny you want to make sure that you're leaving a little bit of the white of the paper um, in that so that you can see kind of where the light is reflecting off of it because the white of the paper is going to be your white if you're not adding in any later. So I wanted to make sure that I didn't completely take that away and it took me quite some time to go through and put in all of these crystals at the top but I think it came out so good and I think it was totally worth it. I added in a couple final details with the pink just a little bit of shading and then I signed it and took off my tape and I was done. I hope this was helpful to you and gave you some good ideas about how to use your alcohol markers and I can't wait to see what everyone has been making this month. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed the art and that it was helpful for you and I will see you next time. To get your own palette packs then definitely visit the link in the description box below and have a great rest of your day. Bye!